There's a separate RGB LED in the little man. Are you kidding me? Everyone and their dog is getting into the gaming phone space now, but not everyone designs their gaming phone for competitive esports play. That's right, David. No, no, stop it. Stop it. This is an esports phone, and there's legitimately some stuff about it that is straight up very, very cool. This is the Lenovo Legion Dual Phone 2. Not dual phone, it's just one phone, dual like. I'm fighting you. That kind of cool stuff. It's got a Snapdragon 888 processor, up to 18 gigabytes of LPDDR5 memory, up to 512 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage, and get this, it's got an active cooling system for its vapor chamber cooler that's got a 12,500 RPM fan here, and then a 15,000 RPM fan at the top for exhaust. So yes, my friends, you are looking at holes in the phone here and here for flipping cooling. And apparently they have rethought the layout of the internals of this phone. So all the heat producing devices are kind of all aligned along this cooling path. They claim that the air heats up as much as 22 degrees going from the intake to the exhaust. This thing is crazy. Like, yeah, the ROG phone is for gaming or whatever, but this is clearly meant to be held like this. I mean, even if I'm taking a picture, so it's got a 63 megapixel camera and 16 megapixel rear snappers on it. Like if I'm taking a picture with this thing, I'm holding it like this, like a freaking camera. Okay, we're, you know what? We're gonna straight up, we're gonna straight up open the camera right away here. Sup, Jono? Look at this guy waving in a picture. Now I got a blurry hand to look at. Anyway, the point is the rear camera is not the main event here. The main event is the pop-out selfie camera. That's right. You cannot be a legit pro gamer unless you have a face cam while you're gaming. Man, this thing is a chonky boy though, which makes sense when you've got an active cooling system with not one, but two fans a 5,500 milliamp hour battery that is split into two and charges at up to 90 watts. And of course, like any self-respecting gaming phone, it's got dual forward facing speakers. So hopefully it's gonna sound pretty decent. That's a bit of a slow fingerprint scanner, but let's see how it uh, performs when, okay. That's fine when you're unlocking, just a little slow to register your fingerprints. That's pretty good. All right, so let's just, oh yeah, there it is. Look at that. What's up, David? Wait, it's on the, hold on a second. Are you kidding me? It is on the lock button. So wait, like what? That is crazy. Why would you put the camera right on the lock button? Yeah, I don't know. If you want the lock button positioned for right-handed people, and then if you want sort of the, the landscape mode to be kind of a sensible, you want the volume rocker out of the way while you're gaming, so you got your shoulder buttons and stuff. I mean, I guess that's just where it has to go. As a PC enthusiast, it drives me crazy how much better the front-facing cameras are on phones. Like, are you telling me, PC manufacturers, that you couldn't find a way to put a camera that thick in your laptop? Impossible? Completely impossible, can't be done. What about processing though? Okay, Intel, are you telling me that processing cannot be fixed? Okay, it can't be better? Yeah. At any rate. Oh. <laughs> that is a lot of smoothing. I am beautiful. Holy crap, look at that. My pores are picture perfect. How much you wanna bet that I straight up do not have wrinkles when I smile on this thing? This side is <laughs> hilariously smoothed. Wow. <laughs> oh, beauty mode, you so silly. That is super cool, and I think they did a bang up job of getting the length of the lens just right for a face camera while you're gaming. But of course, there's more to this that makes it a gaming phone than just performance, cooling, and a front-facing camera. Starting, of course, with all of the touch-sensitive buttons that are located around the device. So on each top, you've got two trigger buttons, or rather really two shoulder buttons because neither of them is pressure sensitive. So you got one, two, three, four. You've got an additional touch sensitive button on the back of the device, which I believe is, you know what? I'm gonna have to find that a little bit later. And then finally, this is super cool. They've gone and they've put a more advanced haptic motor system in this phone so that you've actually got two pressure sensitive buttons on either side of the screen. I am really excited to try that out. Naturally, there's our 
RGB lighting. Hey, all right. So it's got a 144 Hertz display, but there's more to the responsiveness of a mobile phone display than just how quickly it refreshes. It actually pulls for touches at 720 Hertz. So that means that when you touch the screen, by pulling more often, it's getting the most up-to-date possible information so that your inputs are going to have less latency. 720 Hertz. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like we're getting dangerously close to like PC was, peripherals. Yeah. Now, touchscreens are inherently not as responsive as something like a mouse or a keyboard input device, but we can improve that a lot by pulling more frequently. <laughs> oh my God, hold on a second. This is this is hilarious. Um, I'm just gonna enable Trubo fan here. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. So you can change your lighting effects depending on what's going on. So it can play with uh, their music app, which I don't know if you would use that much because you probably have Spotify or whatever. <laughs> Color changes by device temperature when you get calls. Cool. When did having lights on your phone become not cool anymore? Remember those cool apps where you could have like anyone that had an RGB LED? This is back in yeah. like the uh, Nexus 5 days, yeah, right? So you could have like color coded and flashes and stuff. What was that app called? There's like a cool app everyone loves so much. No way! There's a separate RGB LED in the little fan. <laughs> Are you kidding me? To Lenovo Legion's credit, the design is really well balanced. They said that like we saw in the RG Phone 5, they split the battery apart. So this is better for battery longevity as well as for the balance of the device. And talking about battery longevity, yeah, it's all fine and good to be able to charge your device to 50% in 13 minutes. But you also have to have protections in place for your battery. So since this is a device that is very likely to be plugged in via USB Type-C, of course, there are two Type-C ports. There's one that you can use horizontally and one that you can use vertically, you wanna make sure that you're not just juicing it up to 100% and leaving it there the whole time while it's running an intensive application like a game and heating up, because that's really bad for the battery. So they've got Phalanx battery protection system, not to be confused with Phallus battery protection system, which is more common in adult toys. Should we fire up some COD? This video is brought to you by Vincero. Vincero makes timepieces that fit a variety of budgets and they're currently having their spring upgrade sale. You can get up to 30% off and free shipping on everything they sell. And if watches aren't your thing, you can check out their new blue light filtering eyeglasses for some stylish eye protection and no discount code or anything is required. It is automatically applied in the checkout. So don't wait, the sale ends April 12th. So go take advantage of the Vincero spring upgrade sale at the link below. Look at that panoramic stereo sound, 144 Hertz. This display will do up to 1300 nits peak brightness. It's just shy of seven inches, 6.92 inches, and is a 1080p class display. It's 2460 by 1080. I'm expecting it to be very good. To compete with the RG Phone 5, it's gonna have to be excellent. Wow. That's pretty rich, isn't That's it? really good. Yeah. Oh God. Oh boy. Hey, I'm out of here. How do I just aim but not fire? Oh, okay. Like that. Wow, these bots are really bad. These are clearly designed to make you feel good about your skills, man. Because I have barely been touched. Oh, here we go. Oh, well, sorry, I was confused. I couldn't move. <laughs> Too busy winning. Our, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Now that I know how to do it, this is fairly intuitive. It's not bad. So you go Y triggers. See, I just didn't realize you can move these things around. Let's see how it handles screen recording while playing. Okay, what's Rampage? I think Rampage, oh wow, high speed mode. I mean, this game's locked at 30 to 60 FPS anyway, but there are games that do run at high frame rate. Man, having all those extra functions bound to the touch buttons at the back and stuff, not bad. And you know what, to its credit, I've been sitting here playing for, I don't know, what, 10, 15 minutes at this point? It's barely even warm to the touch. Here it is. So this is where they put all the heat generating components and even with the fans running, like it's warm. But the sides where my hands are, not bad. Hold on, let me see how many of these bots I can line up and kill at the same time. <laughs> they just stand there. Oh man, I still can't kill them. It's shocking. Like, are they pointing at the ground? Watch them, watch them, watch them. Let's see, let's see where he shoots. Where, where are you shooting, dog? Look at this guy, look, he's shooting at the ground. I mean, if the idea of gaming is to make you feel like an unstoppable badass, this is gonna do the trick for you. It's like, I might as well be Darth Vader fighting like Ewoks. Like an army of Ewoks, like Jar Jar Binks sized Ewoks. <laughs> or Ewok sized Jar Jar Binkses. What would be worse? <laughs>
I'm impressed. The display looks freaking great. They boast, what is it, 110% coverage of DCI-P3 or something like that? 111? Pretty darn impressive. The sound is great. HDR10+, Plus. if you're into gaming, hey, this is looking pretty compelling. And that middle part really is toasty. Like this thing is freaking, it's going, man. Oh, I just realized I never actually um, <laughs> finished doing the unboxing. It comes with two USB-C to C cables. What else we got here? This thing is freaking heavy. Hold on a second. Do you have to plug both freaking cables in to get the max output? Are you kidding me? Am I understanding this correctly? Okay, what else we got? Stylish outside. Oh God. Yeah, that's not what I would describe as stylish outside. <laughs> Everything else about this has been great so far. Look at that. Type C to headphone jack. How hard was that, Apple? Really hard, apparently. Sim, oh, I didn't even mention it has dual SIM slots. So we've got a SIM removal tool and that's, that's it for the accessory package. Man, this really puts the brick in power brick, this thing. This is a really cool device. Now that gaming phones have been through their first couple of sort of, yeah, does this really need to exist? If it does, not really in this form kind of iterations. Ah, it's getting to the point where like, honestly, if most of what you did was game on, you know, a mobile device, like an Android device, there's a lot of gaming to be done on this and the price doesn't even seem that outlandish compared to another mobile gaming console. Like, I mean, well, really there's only the Switch. The Vita's switch still light, alive. switch light, switch light. The Vita's still alive. The Vita is not still alive, David. I'm alive! But this channel is still alive, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss more videos here on Short Circuit.